Quantum Mechanics and the Afterlife Afterlife prediction, you are subjectively immortal. Quantum mechanics started as a theory of quanta, light particles, but later it was realized its rules apply to all particle types. For the previous century evidence favored the idea that light is a wave. New findings at the turn of the 20th century brought this into doubt. Max Planck's finding on black body radiation in 1899. Albert Einstein's account of the photoelectric effect in 1905. And, Niels Bohr's model of the atom in 1913. All three results suggested that light was made of particles, not waves. It took nearly two decades for physicists to reconcile this. In 1925, Werner Heisenberg, Max Born, and Pascual Jordan developed a theory based on matrices. Later that year, Erwin Schrödinger developed an alternate formula based on a wave equation. Heisenberg's and Schrödinger's approaches gave the same answers. Later John von Neumann proved the two formulas were equivalent. We now have an answer to the question of is light a particle or a wave? Light is made of particles, but the probable locations of these particles is governed by an equation similar to those describing waves. Today, quantum mechanics is thoroughly confirmed. It is responsible for the most accurate prediction in all of physics and is the basis of numerous technologies, including lasers, transistors, and LEDs. We couldn't have high-speed fiber optic networks, DVDs, flash memory, microprocessors, or flat-screen displays without these. But there is a disturbing consequence to the equations of quantum mechanics, particles can be in multiple locations at once. Quantum computers speed up computations by exploiting the fact that particles can simultaneously be in multiple states at once. Schrödinger was the first to realize his equation, interpreted literally, predicts an infinite number of unseen universes, where every experimental possibility is realized, a quantum multiverse. But he never published this idea. He mentioned it in a 1952 lecture, where he warned that what he was about to say might seem lunatic. His lunatic idea, when the Schrödinger equation seems to describe several different histories they are not alternatives but all really happen simultaneously. Quote, Here was an eminent physicist, joking that he might be considered mad. Why? For claiming that his own equation, the very one for which we had won the Nobel Prize might be true. End quote. David Deutsch, inventor of the quantum computer, in the beginning of infinity. The idea, was not published until five years later. A graduate student at Princeton, Hugh Everett III, independently reached the same conclusion. He published it as his 1957 doctoral thesis. Quote, The universal wave function, must contain amplitudes for all possible worlds depending on all quantum mechanical possibilities in the past and thus one is forced to believe in the equal reality of an infinity of possible worlds. End quote. Richard Feynman, who won the 1965 Nobel Prize in Physics for Quantum Electrodynamics. In 1981, Richard Feynman was the first to have the idea of a quantum computer, a computer that exploits the resources in parallel universes to speed up calculations. In 1984, the physicist David Deutsch showed how to build one. Deutsch believes quantum computers can provide near irrefutable evidence of many worlds. Quote, Since the universe as we see it lacks the computational resources to do the calculations, where are they being done? It can only be in other universes. Quantum computers share information with huge numbers of versions of themselves throughout the multiverse. End quote. David Deutsch. Quantum computers are now a reality. You can sign up for free to run your own programs on quantum computers. That quantum computers exist forces us to confront the existence of alternate universes. 
If this prediction of multiple parallel histories is true, then we live in a reality where anything that can happen, does happen. This not only affects life as we know it, but also the afterlife. Quantum Mechanics's Predictions for the Afterlife Quantum mechanics implies the existence of unlimited alternate histories and universes. Within these universes are unlimited alternate versions of us, each living out every permutation of every possibility. One implication of this idea is a form of immortality. Hugh Everett, who originated the many worlds idea, was the first to introduce the concept of quantum immortality, the idea that because we only perceive branches of the Schrödinger equation where we survive, it is impossible to die from one's own point of view. In a discussion with his employee Keith Lynch, also a trained physicist, Lynch recounts that Everett raised the question of whether it made sense for a believer in many worlds to play high-stakes Russian roulette as, in some universe, a version of you is bound to win. Quote, Everett firmly believed that his many worlds theory guaranteed him immortality, his consciousness, he argued, is bound at each branching to follow whatever path does not lead to death, and so on ad infinitum. End quote. Keith Lynch In the 1980s, others realized this implication of quantum mechanics. Quote, For an example to illustrate this lack of uniqueness we might return to the double slit experiment and suppose the right hand detector is attached to a gun which shoots and kills me if it records a particle. Then after one particle had passed through the experiment, the wave function would contain a piece with me alive and a piece with me dead. One I would certainly be alive, so we appear to have a sort of Russian roulette, in which we cannot really lose. Indeed, since all aging or decaying processes are presumably quantum mechanical in nature, there is always a small part of the wave function in which they will not have occurred. Thus to be completely fanciful, immortality is guaranteed, I will always be alive in the only part of the wave function of which I am aware. End quote. Ewan J. Squires in The Mystery of the Quantum World, 1986 The concept was independently described by roboticist Hans Moore of X in his 1987 book Mind Children, and also by the logician Bruno Marshall in his 1988 paper on Formatique Theorique et Philosophie de l'Esprit. We can only experience the branches where we survive. Accordingly, everyone is subjectively, from their viewpoint, immortal. Whenever, in some particular history, your life ends, there is always some other history in the multiverse, where your life continues. In our branch, Hugh Everett died in 1982 at age 51. But if his thesis is right, there are other branches where he is alive to this day. Even unlikely events, such as quantum tunneling to a younger age, will for some of our lucky selves, forestall the decline of old age. Everett's daughter, Liz Everett, took her life in 1996. In her note she expressed hope of meeting her father in a parallel universe. It is especially tragic when a young person dies. There is so much unrealized potential, so many experiences never had. Under quantum mechanics that potential is not unrealized, only realized elsewhere in reality, in other histories of the multiverse. The idea of an infinite reality, filled with infinite universes can be found in many religions. Quote, there are innumerable universes besides this one, and although they are unlimitedly large, they move about like atoms in you. End quote. Bhagavata Purana 6 1637, circa 800-1000 AD. Quote. God has the power to fill the vacuum with an infinite number of universes. End quote. Fake Aldin al-Razi in Matalib Volume 5, C 1200 AD. If the quantum multiverse is real, then we never experience death. Further, one's life is not constrained to a single path. Rather, each life branches out to explore every possibility. We experience all of them, 
every road not taken. If quantum mechanics is true, there are branches of history in which you were never born. Or died at a younger age. But despite the opinions of people in those branches you are here, alive and well. Those who have died from our perspective feel the same, from the position of whichever branches they survive in. If quantum mechanics is true, you are subjectively immortal. Accordingly, from your own point of view, you will live forever. For more on quantum mechanics, see, does everything that can happen, actually happen?